Hey guys, this is Josh from Bulls on Wall Street. Today I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about BPTH, um, Biopath Holdings Incorporated. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know about it, basically it's been a wicked stock that's ran from $2 all the way up to $75 and crashed down to $36 at its close yesterday. And uh, today it's faded off down to roughly $26 right now during the market. So uh, a couple of big points I just want to talk to you guys about. So obviously, number one, why did this come up on our radar? Why have we had this on our watch list for the last week? Um, number two, go over a couple of my trades, a couple of the trades that our members have made in our room. Uh, number three, you know, going back in retrospect and looking at where the ideal entry spots could have been, where we could improve. Um, and then on top of that as well, where we would place our stops or how you guys can look at placing stops with volatile stocks like this. And then lastly as well, just talking about how to find these kind of plays in the future. Uh, they don't happen all the time, obviously, like a stock doesn't make a run over a thousand percent every single day, but um, it's just kind of nice to have uh, the insights and criteria to, to kind of filter this for when it does happen in the future. So let's dive right into it. So Biopath, uh, let's pull up the news here. So February 28th, they released a new statement. Um, let's see right here. If you go to the press release, I'm just on Market Watch too. Go down. So February 28th right here, Biopath Holdings to present data at the 2019 AACR annual meeting. So basically what happened was they had a phase two successful trial um, with leukemia. Um, and basically they're going to pre present their data and uh, earnings reports and future outlook for the company at the, the annual meeting here. So, I mean, it's no, uh, it's news that's not going to push a stock or anything, but it's just, you know, good sentiment leading into the month of March. Uh, what happened basically on, that was on March 1st, pre-market when we started seeing this thing on our radar. Or around this day, I'll zoom in for you guys here. Uh, so right around here. So we had this thing come up on our radar, obviously with the pre-market scanner. Um, it was trading, uh, I believe half a million shares or whatever pre-market. And it had a nice day, you know, it trended all day. Um, I was trading some other stocks in the morning, but I hit this thing later on in the day for this later pullback to the VWAP and flag. Um, and I made a nice rip on it. So that was the first day. This is kind of where we put on the radar. And we're like, hey, this is a low float stock. Uh, if we want to check back on the, the Yahoo financials, we always want to be taking a mindful look at what the float is with the stock. So when we're checking this guy out, look at this half a million share float, 500,000 shares. So when you see a stock like that, I mean, typically in our room, uh, Bulls on Wall Street here, we're, we're usually trading stocks, you know, under 100 million shares. So when we see something that's this low, um, and it's trading its entire float already in the pre-market, then we know that that's a sign that, you know, this is a potential stock that could either make an exponential run, uh, you know, be parabolic, and, uh, and you know, if it does take off, it could be one of these things where it just trends all, all day. So that was the first. Uh, we had it on. What happened after that? Okay, so we had the fourth and the fifth, obviously the Monday, Tuesday. Nothing really happened. It just kind of hung out um, and lollygagged. Um, Wednesday, it gapped up again. What happened on this day? Same thing in the pre-market. Uh, basically what they did was they released more news on what happened. So it was March 6th, I believe. Yeah. Right here. Uh, Biopath announces clinical update to interim analysis of phase two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher that <laughs> trial in acute myeloid leukemia. So, uh, just releasing more information about, you know, their successful trial. If you guys, I did, you know, pull up the link here. So if you guys want to pause it and read this over, they basically are talking about, um, the phase two trial, what went well in it, uh, and some outlook into some clinical tests for it. I mean, one thing I want to bring up to you guys, you don't have to read this over and spend hours and hours pre-market looking over the fundamentals and the PRs about this stuff, you know, just glance it over. Usually with these biotech stuff, it's it's either talking about what phase they're in, uh, whether it's successful or not, whether it's going to clinical practices or not, um, whether it's getting approved by FDA. Um, obviously, if you guys can just pick up on those key words and figure out if it's a good sentiment or poor sentiment, then you kind of know the direction or like the support for why it's gapping up. So that was the catalyst on Mar or, uh, Wednesday pre-market. What happened on that day? We had the similar kind of move, same thing. I didn't uh, trade it in the morning. We had some guys make some nice moves off this ORB in the morning here, but same thing, same pattern, you know, gapped up, nice trender all day, pulled back, uh, had this rounding action right around this 11, and I took it for a nice dollar fifty, dollar sixty average uh, rip on it per share. So that was another nice trade in it uh, today, or sorry, yesterday rather. Uh, <laughs> this is when it really went psychotic. So for those of you guys that didn't check it out yesterday, basically made a move from just under twenty dollars to all the way up to seventy five or seventy four, I believe, um, and then it crashed right back down. So the reason why I want to talk to you guys why I didn't trade this thing um, yesterday, there's a couple reasons. 
uh, here I'll pull this up, zoom this in for you guys, so we can kind of break this down. And just to break, uh, you know, talk about this further uh, with my charting layout, I like to have my five minute, three minute, and one minute chart just up because, I mean, as we preach in our boot camp and courses, you always want to have multiple time frame analysis, right? So I've always found that when I was trading on the one minute or the three minute, um, I would, you know, just get chopped out. I would be putting stops at the wrong areas, and you know, I'd take a flag pattern on a one or a three minute, and it wouldn't be aligning on a five minute. So. This way I can see everything in you know one quick look. Um, you know, the five minutes always the best telltale sign of a pattern, intraday at least, and so this is kind of my whole layout and uh, and way I attack um, these these small cap stocks with it. But so what happened on this yesterday? Yesterday we had this insane, insane pre-market volume. Uh, I'll bring this back up here. I just use pre-market watch, you guys, it's it's free, easy to use, stockmarketwatch.com, pre-market. Uh, what happened with BPTH? This thing already traded 2.7 million shares pre-market. So if we go back and talk about its float, it's already traded five times its float. Um, so if you're talking about supply and demand, it's circled through its entire float share basically five times uh, before the market's even open. So what, this is a, a great indicator for when you see these kind of small cap stocks making these previous day moves and you have it on your watch list, flag it on these kind of days because then you know it's really going to go parabolic and uh, you're going to see some, some wicked upside to it. But at the same token, this is also the reason why I did not trade it. As you guys can see at the first open here, it, it already halted twice off volume spikes. So those two reasons, I'm a pretty risk averse trader. I don't like dealing with stocks that, you know, end up halting and you're sitting in a position that's basically doing nothing and <laughs> has a potential to gap down, uh, you know, hefty, hefty amount. So I didn't take this. A lot of the guys in the room, they were waiting, 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 waiting. Some of the guys were holding it from, from their swings. If you pull this back up, uh, make this chart a little bit better. Some guys were holding swings around in the 5 and the $10 area off this little mini flag, I guess you could call it, and they were cashing out in the 30s. So some people were already selling it here, uh, but a lot of other people were taking this for, you know, a flag. As you can see, this thing's consolidating back and forth, making a tighter, tighter range. The EMAs are all tightening up and rounding underneath it. Um, and a lot of guys took it right around 30. I know even my brother ripped this thing from 30 just to under $40. Um, and it was a nice, clean trader. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you have volume confirmation. If you guys check it out, you have this vo high relative volume coming in to support the move. Um, it was still trading clean. It wasn't making like, you know, these extremely volatile moves on the up or down uh, side of the stock. So this was a nice clean trender to get in um, at this point right around here. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys, when this thing or kind of a trade happens, you got to just really be mindful of where the price action is in relation to the moving averages. So if you're looking at the five minute here, I mean, once this thing really took off, there, you can't take an entry anywhere after $30. I mean, even here at this point, it's really parabolic. I mean, if you think about it, a week ago it was at $2. Uh, that alone is just something that rings red flags in, in my ear. I just, I can't be taking those kind of trades. But uh, for those people that did, I mean... This is the only ideal spot you can take it because you have what the 90 MA tight end close underneath, um, you know, um, closing in a price action, tightening a price action, and then this thing just kind of took off. So if you guys are looking to set your stops in this kind of thing, um, a lot of people do. They set it under the 90 MA, let this thing ride out. I mean, once it gets too parabolic, you just have to have a little bit of common sense and pull an audible. I mean, if you're up five, ten, twenty dollars per share in a stock, you got to be scaling out on the way out here. I mean, you can't be holding on 500 to 1,000 shares and being like, hey, let's just see how far this thing goes until it pulls back to the 90 EMA, because oftentimes these things just move, you know, look at this right here, 20 bucks from the 90 EMA. Well, are you going to wait $20 for a retracement and sell it on the break? No, you're going to obviously be cashing out along the way. So whether you're taking out, you know, eights or quarters or selling a half at two to one and then scaling out the rest, whatever it is, making just make sure you're taking profits off the table, um, scaling out your risk, and, you know, just, just being leery of, of the back end. Because what, what happens, this happens with every single one. I'll talk to you guys about two other trades that were like this too. Um, and just, it's the same thing. History repeats itself. So if we're looking at this, okay, sure. Made this sick run to $75. You start getting texts from your friends and neighbors saying, hey, have you heard about this stock? I heard they have a cured cancer. I might buy some shares in it. No, you obviously don't do that. I mean, if you look at any trade, this thing was basically down 1,000%. Uh, a week ago and what happens that parabolic move just returns right back to where it was so it ended up coming right back down to where basically the breakout spot was at 26 27 dollars uh, and then it just faded off the remainder of the day uh, same thing with today i mean it's basically had another gap down and then just kind of faded off the, the remainder of today as well um, and i mean if we're looking at this thing from from a parabolic standpoint i mean we could see this thing easily get down to 20 15 even 10 dollars you know in the next week or so so these are kind of plays, once you get into the first, you know, day one, day two of the move, like I said, yesterday was pretty much the day, the big day one, or sorry, uh, big day two move. Uh, the day before on Wednesday was, you know, the big day one move. 
Uh, if you guys can catch it, day one's usually always the cleanest one. Day two, you can still get it, but usually things get parabolic either on the upside or it just starts to fade on the backside. Uh, and then obviously day three and day four is when most of the shorts come in uh, and then you just kind of push this thing right back down to the medium of where it was. So that's one I just want to talk to you guys about. Um, a couple other things. When you're looking at these kind of stocks, you want to make sure that they have a history of being a big runner. So, you know, for one, we talked about having a low float. Okay, that's awesome. But okay, what's the price action in this previously? If you guys just do a little, you know, backing out of this, it's like, okay, whatever. The stock, you know, it's got some decent action. It's been a stock under $100. Well, if you really back out, you'll see that this thing actually was <laughs> trading at $1,000 back in 2014. So when you look at a stock like this, it's got these kind of days where it's, you know, the ranges are moving like, I mean, 60s, 50, 40 bucks on the, any one of these days, then you really got to be, be mindful of that. And, you know, look at this for a potential runner, um, especially when you like you talk about the low float, high pre-market volume, uh, and it's gapping, you know, the, on that day, it gapped above the 200 MA. So, I mean, this thing really had, uh, had some upside to, to push on it. So another thing I want to talk to you guys. So when we're talking about, you know, looking for these things in the future, where you can kind of pick up on these things. So this was actually one of my best trades of the year was in MBOT. Uh, this happened back in January. And the funny thing about it actually too, they had a similar um, PR, if I can remember correctly, I believe it was a phase two even um, regarding cancer trials, basically saying that they have another cure for cancer. Um, and that same thing, they had a parabolic run on this thing, they had a big day one, day two, it made another big run on it. I missed it on the, on the first big day, but the second day, which would have been like, you know, BBTH yesterday was a same kind of trade. You know, you hit it either on the, the ORB, uh, or the flag at the, the, the first pullback. And then you just kind of let that thing run. And as you guys can see, like on this day it went from $9 pretty much all the way up to 18. So I was scaling out for, you know, $10, 11 dollars 50 12 50 14 50 and then my last sell was just under 18 here. Uh, but that's kind of the way you guys got to hit it. When you get these kind of runners, like I said, uh, if you guys also remember too, uh, Dries was like this too. For a lot of you guys that have been trading for around, or been around the trading world for a while, you guys obviously know like Dries, uh, it's a shipper stock. This thing, <laughs> this thing's made some, some wicked, wicked runs. And same thing, you know, it's got a low float stock. So, just a couple things to be leery of. Uh, I want to give you guys a couple points when we're looking at this for the future so you guys can pick this up. So what you want to look for, number one, low float. Always be checking the float, making sure it's under at least 100 million shares. If it's under, you know, five or 10 or even under 1 million shares, then you, re you can really hit this and, and let it rock. Um, number two, a clean daily chart. We want to make sure that this thing, you know, it's got history of making big moves. Um, it's clean uh, intraday for for its ranges um, and we can easily get in and get out and make some some clean day trades out of it um, on top of that I also want to be looking at the relative volume so obviously if we're looking at this I mean the first day it made its first run on on March 1st this thing had some wicked relative volume I mean it traded nearly over 50 shares or sorry 50 million shares compared to uh, where is its average volume here average volume yeah 1.5 million so it basically did a 50 to 1 um, relative volume spike on that so that's one thing to always be mindful of put it on your list watch it if it doesn't trade the next day don't worry about it it might come up again especially if it starts gapping again that's when you want to throw it back on your radar and uh and check and you know get the double confirmation of the volume make sure it's there so um and then finally obviously clean price action one thing i want to talk to you guys a little bit about too just to wrap this up uh when you're looking at these things you know you're making your watch list in the pre-market and you're you're um you're checking, you know, filtering your list, whether you have five, 10 or 20 stocks on your watch list, you want to really dial it down at the open to be like focused on the, you know, the hot one or two setups you want to trade. Uh, one thing I really like to do is, is break this down to a one minute chart again, like I said, uh, right at the open here and just check the volume. I mean, when you're looking at some of your other gappers, I mean, you, you'll know pretty, pretty soon within the first couple minutes, whether this thing's going to be like a turd and just not do anything or if it's actually going to take off. So um, yesterday, if we're looking at it, I mean, it's trying traded, what was it? Uh, 3.6 million shares the first minute, you know, and that's still not even including the 2.5 million shares pre-market. So this thing already traded 6 million and a half million share float. I mean, that's just a telltale sign that you guys should, for one, be, you know, if you're not trading, at least be watching it for pullbacks. Um, and then obviously wiping off the ones on your list that don't have that supportive volume. Um, usually if it's anything like on a one minute candle, or five or so yeah one minute candle under under a hundred thousand shares you know i'm usually not trading it or um i'm putting it on my secondary list just because you know, i'm always looking for the most uh, the most actionable stocks that can give you those really big pops in its ranges especially on those opening range breakouts so hope this guy or hope this uh trade review helps you guys out um in the future you know always be looking at the, these gappers 
uh, checking out just a brief rundown of the fundamentals, um, the float, relative volume, history of its moves, and uh, just hit it. You know, make sure your risk is tight. You know, always be buying on support. Don't be buying a resistance and just uh, just really nail these guys. So hope you guys had a great week of trading. If you guys made money, congratulations. If you guys did it, go back, back test, look through all your trades, do your journals. Um, and make sure you guys just really figure out what the catalyst was for your losses and how you can remove that variable moving forward to next week. So happy Friday. Hope you guys have a great weekend and take care.